Welcome, modern day mystics, fellow truth seekers, James and Justin back again. And today we have another special guest with us. We have Alex Shaler from his self-titled YouTube channel. Now, Alex, he is an expert coach, meditation teacher, and anxiety healer. And a big part of his channel focuses around non-duality. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure we're going to get into some really fascinating conversations. Anxiety right? coach. Yeah. That's stay tuned for that. Who doesn't yeah. want to reduce their anxiety? But also, I've been getting into uh, some of his videos on law of attraction. Mm. And I find it very interesting what he has to say about that. That's, you know, manifesting what you want and attracting things into your life. Yeah. So anyway, guys, we won't keep you waiting. Let's get into it. Alex, so good to have you. Uh, I thought maybe a good place to begin as a non-dual expert might be with your story a little bit before non-duality and then, you know, what brought you to that point and then kind of now living in maybe a world of non-duality as a teacher. It's hard to pinpoint exactly where anything starts, right? If you look into the story, mm. um, it could have been dreams and out-of-body experiences as a child. It could have been some random person chucking Zen koans at me in a chat room when I was 15. It might have been downloading Alan Watts talks off of Napstar when I was 16, waiting for the whole evening for them to be downloaded excitedly by the morning. It might have been um, when my 10 year relationship of that time broke down when I was in my early 30s and being introduced to the power of now. Uh, that's one I usually point to because if you can point to any moments, there was a pivotal moment reading that book of realizing, Hey, I'm not that mind story, that tortuous theater in my head. There's this presence. Um, I don't know if I ever can I didn't conceptualize it as awareness or consciousness at that point. It was just sense perceptions. It was just the space around the thinking as it were, but that was a great revelation and also did open up into a deeper exploration into because you know may uh eckhart tolle's quite accessible sort of mainstream branch of this gives you a good sort of relative in and something to relate to uh and then eventually you start going down youtube rabbit holes or whatever as most people do and uh you're uh, bowing down to the uh guru algorithm and uh <laughs> and getting served up all kinds of stuff that's uh on the side of really radical non-duality and also you know the awareness kind of stuff that's out there if anybody doesn't know non-duality that well uh they might not know exactly what i'm talking about but there's different expressions of this message uh which often point back to the same thing this truth of our being as inherently peaceful and free and flawlessly perfect and wise and whole and complete. And, you know, that's so that's a big overview. Can I point to any particular moment? It's been kind of stages of revelation and unfolding, and I don't think it ever really ends. And what it reveals ultimately is that it was a story anyway. Now it's a memory and that <laughs> all we can really verify is ultimately true is just this presence of awareness uh now but definitely in the dark night of a soul after a breakup there's a great desire to eject from that uh mind story and the feeling of the emotional pain happening to me and being bound to that whole cognitive landscape of limitations yeah. and so hearing the silence in my dark room as opposed to just the voice in my head at that time and the space that opened up for me and what followed was probably quite pivotal and you're very good at um you're part of a growing tribe of people that are getting very good at through explanation of these things getting directly Getting directly to the point where you can actually cause a bit of an identity shift or gestalt in someone listening. I noticed even when I was listening to some of your videos, um, just the way you were sort of talking about, uh, I suppose, like the persona of a person. Um, 
the being identified with an individual an individuality that's false so one of your videos i can't remember which one it mm. was i was like i remember noting oh that like caused a little bit of an identity shift even the way he was talking about that uh, people to get, are to get into the non-duality stuff a little bit in terms of identity mm. that's great to hear that's what others are reporting <laughs> that's yeah. what that's yeah. what people are reporting uh I mean, the idea is, you know, you create your content to communicate this message. And in some people, it's heard. And like, I on a human level, I'm a simple guy, you know, I can't dress things up too much in fancy words and concepts and layers before I feel very quickly like I'm getting away from the essence of what it is. So yeah. People are saying to me, yeah, oh, the reason why I like your stuff is because it's like direct and simple in a way. I hope at least simple. Sometimes I think I overcomplicate it. But um, because I like that directness myself, I guess, there's yeah. a personal desire for that over here, like just to point straight towards it. And I think um, also it's a message and uh, you know mine isn't the only form of this but this for this message is i think really applicable to the modern world because awakening enlightenment um was you know you'd usually first hear those words uh, in association to the indian gurus or sages or something and then you might think you might have to go to meditate in an ashram for 20 years or <laughs> fly or fly around the world and um get a guru and you're thinking hang on a minute i've got a nine to five and a wife and kids here you know so uh yes. what the modern non-duality what is pointing to is that it is available immediately okay there might be an embodiment phase that might have happened before the so-called awakening or enlightenment in the more traditional paths uh, an unfolding of the awakening or an embodiment or sometimes people call it integration but what's I think very appealing about it to a lot of people is that it's 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 really taking down the obstacles and and showing the unconditionality of this message that it's not something to be achieved in the future there is things to be achieved on a relative level in terms of emotional states or states of manifestation or whatever obviously there is the relative world of form but that all happens in this unconditional allowing and peace which is instantly realizable and instantly accessible and always but, but, immediate before we jump in too far i'm always trying to be aware of that i know there's a lot of people that watch our channel from different backgrounds and different mm. traditions because of the content we, that we do so they might not be familiar with exactly what we're even talking about here so maybe it might be good to just get like a like a quick breakdown on how you define non-duality uh, just for maybe our newer audience out there. Yeah, absolutely. Your content's quite varied, isn't it? And so um, I guess yeah, there's many different ways you could express it. And um, at the base level, non-duality means not two or one without a second. And what that's basically saying is the nature of reality or the nature of self or God or the universe, whatever you want to call it, is non-dual as in it is already a single indivisible whole it is already nothing that is appearing as anything everything is already in the infinite um and non-dual realization or revelation or remembering is the remembering of that truth and the dissolution of the belief in what's often in non-duality referred to as the illusion which is the limited separate self which is said to be illusory in that it is not ultimately who we are we may appear as a body and a mind and thoughts and a personal story and a personal history but we even the most skeptical of us can recognize that there is this so there's something bigger than that here, <laughs> this presence of being, this space of awareness in which this all takes place. And non-duality is pointing to that as the fundamental reality that consciousness 
the totality as the fundamental reality to who we are and the nature of reality and that that is immediately available to be recognized and that one can recognize that we are not just a limited separate self you know we're not ultimately that we may appear as that but our true nature is beyond that and our true nature has qualities you could say in the sense that it is peace or you could call the peace the path of all understanding as its nature as in there are ways of investigating to see whether that is true in your reality in your experience inquiry questions like has any of your feelings thoughts experiences harmed you awareness you can see through investigation that allowing is its nature is your nature has this space of awareness that you are ever resisted any of the content flowing through it and so in resting as our true nature as this presence of awareness the implications of that become clearer and clearer in our life and that peace and qualities of awareness that we are the peace and love and allowing and acceptance and wholeness can pour out into the person as it were it's it's actually amazing when you read about somebody like jesus or buddha and 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 it looks good on the onset it's like look at that's the stuff christ would talk about like uh loving people and generosity and being slow to anger and all these things and it's like from the ego's perspective it might be like well i'm just going to do that then i'm just going to be slow to anger and i'm just going to be generous uh but what you're talking about is interesting in the sense that um if you actually start to resist the ego a little bit or or watch it or whatever and it gets a little quieter and slows down and then maybe um reality or the non-dual perspective starts shining through like shining through beyond the persona Mm -hmm. those qualities start to emerge it's just there's something about trying to communicate that with an ego or two egos where it's like well i'm just gonna do it then i'm just gonna act that way but it doesn't work out that way and that i don't even know what i'm getting at i think i'm just trying to bounce off of what you're saying but i was just i'm, I'm just noticing the mystical nature of it because this stuff gets talked about so much and uh the ability that you have to refine it down and get to it quickly is impressive and others and uh i think that there's a there's something true about that there's something true about the authentic um uh non-dual state shining through the persona versus an egoic approach to it that tries to like uh, discipline itself into being good or discipline itself into being charitable there's a difference there yeah yeah we can talk about that yeah, I feel like you've made a few different points there. It's like for sure <laughs> the the um, the the nature of communicating this because it's we're pointing to what's ultimate and trying to use relative dualistic language, and also pointing to the fact that if one tries to reach this through the paradigm of being a separate, limited individual which is ego in the sense that ego isn't an entity. There's nothing there. It's just the belief in being a separate limited individual and a belief in that thought narrative. So if you're trying to achieve this from that level, it, then it's there's it, you can't do it from that level, can you? Because and it's, it's unfulfilling and fake <laughs> and not real. And it's just trying to swap out one form for another yes which is what this is pointing to is the source of all forms it's 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 trying to find wholeness unconditional wholeness under the premise of being a separate limited individual that's going to find it in the future how is that ever going to happen it's 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 trying to find the nature of yourself in the future when your nature of yourself is only ever present now and it's always a, it's all it, it's trying to find the true nature of reality in some kind of state in the future 
when right. the true nature of reality is true now, retros- if it is the true. You're correct. Or like <laughs> I was saying to James before we started, or like retrospectively, like I was just baffled at this idea of somebody being like, well, the, t- the important thing is I've lived a good life up till now. Like, what difference does that make <laughs> in the present moment? You know what I mean? Like, um, I, I love this idea of s- this sudden emergence or or present moment realization, you know, as the in real time uh, alleviation from suffering and uh, something to help you out of that, the grasp of the ego, you know. Exactly. Is it more re- is it more realistic to uh, for there to be kind of like a gradual uh, coming into non duality rather than these grandioso stories that we usually hear, where like he was sitting on a bench and all of a sudden it dawned on him, and uh, you know you know he was the one, you know he was enlightened, he figured everything out. I feel like more and more we're starting to see kind of this gradual like as people mm-hmm. start to learn about this and you know, do whatever practices they're doing. They're kind of like, you know, one day just realizing like, wait a second. Yeah, what's the deal with it? Something's changed in me. Does Mm. it have to be sudden or can it be gradual? And what is that? Why do we hear about the stories where, why would we be fascinated with some (laughs) all at once story, you know? I hope that parries well with what you're saying. Yeah, I get it. Like, um, I mean, most of uh, the people that are famous around this have quite grandiose stories as in like for example Eckhart Tolle was on the verge of suicide yeah, when yeah. when when there was this awakening and you see the shit the actual recognition is beyond anything that's happening in in the world of form it's beyond time it's beyond any particular emotional state or experience however it can look it the the the, the or the effects of it, as it were, can look different in different people. So what what it can be the case is, is that when there is one who is really, truly, deeply suffering, in that moment, there can be a desire to, to look deeper and beyond that. And then when the truth is glimpsed, the contrast between that and their current suffering state is so big that it creates a huge shift in the body and mind. And then we have grandiose awakening stories, like I thought I was going to die and then I realized I was the awareness, or whatever it is. But that is not necessarily the case for everybody. For some people, the recognition may be very subtle or it may go completely unnoticed and yet their life still converges towards more peace and love and harmony and happiness. And it, 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 it's dependent on a lot of factors, but that's the, one of the main ones. It's just the perceived contrast. If you're sort of floating around and life isn't so, doesn't seem so torturous at the moment, the relative peace of being might not seem so profound and groundbreaking to begin with, and the mind can't even really register it. The mind can't capture consciousness. It can't get out of this to capture it, you see, because it's an appearance of this. It can only ever register changes that happen as a result of this recognition. So the recognition is always the same, whether it be like, uh, you know, guru, master has sudden awakening, or you know, average Joe just slowly open, you know, it opens up to this. Um, It's a timeless recognition of this simple presence of beingness arising as everything that's always immediate. And so those are the, I hope that answers your questions. Like those are the reasons for the, 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 the apparent differences, really, it just unfolds in, in others' lives differently, depending on their psychological states. Yeah, and I like what you said about how it can appear differently. You know, I'm imagining somebody who even identifies that they are suffering or have been in a lot of pain and other people are like, you don't, you seem like you're killing it to me. Like, I thought you were like successful and doing well and that person realizes Mm. that they're suffering and then they have a big change and they're like, not as egoically invested. You know what I mean? Their life takes a different takes on a different uh looks different from the outside it's that in that way it's sort of a personal thing i think um 
And of course, that's just one of the many versions of it that can happen. But I feel like I've observed that sort of thing happening before where the onlookers of somebody might not might not identify it as some dramatic change for the better. It might look any kind of different way to the to onlookers, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends a bit. If, you, if you're uh, one who's really still in the throes of materialism and one of your friends uh, is suffering so much, they're willing to let go of a whole identity based around accumulating accolades or things, then you might you two might gravitate away from each other, to, at least temporarily, yeah. because there's a mismatch in desires now. Yeah. You know, yeah. someone may there can be a transitional period where um our desires change and are not motivated so much uh around building well probably not at all building up a personality um there may you there may still be the acquiring of material things but not under the impression that they're going to give you any permanent peace or security uh, those kinds of illusions tend to be seen through. And so uh, our desires and our the, the kind of conversations that we want to have can change. But I feel like even though this is a transitionary period, and, you know, some people can feel a bit lonely. And I, I understand that. I think if you don't, you know, you don't have to consent to that being appropriated as some kind of story and identity again. If, yeah resting as your true nature as awareness people will naturally appear in, in resting in the knowledge of yourself as not separate as whole as consciousness that tends to start to get reflected in your life in terms of the kind of connections that show up also things that life circumstances that are gonna point where you're still not free in the body and mind, where there's still stuck, limited emotions or thoughts that have survived the recognition of your true nature. Life tends to give you circumstances to dig the rest of it up and release it in the light of awareness. But I think, I think you know, it's... Sorry, I, I was just right there. I, uh, that was an interesting thing that you were saying about stuck things as, you're as this stuff is either falling away or as you're developing. And uh, could you talk at all about, say, after awakening, um, proclivities that somebody may have? Like, I mean, there seems to be a consistent personality that keeps returning with anybody. Like, I think about Adi Ashanti, or I think about Eckhart Tolle, or I think about Osho. They're this, they're, so there's variations in how they present themselves, but there's a consistency to their character every time mm. they return to speak. And can you talk at all about um why that would be you know like sometimes i i think that people underestimate how much of their identity is just a choice like go out somewhere and change your accent or go out somewhere and behave like you're a different person just to get a sense of how fake the persona really is but mm. but some things are pretty strong like your tendency towards i know that you coach with anxiety maybe we could even get into that mm. the tendency somebody may have to physiological anxiety like my you know my partner when they speak in front of large groups always goes red faced whether they're embarrassed or not it's like a physiological reaction mm. uh so i was wondering if you could talk about that and what role anxiety plays or like a tendency towards certain things is it always something that you're supposed to outgrow or is some part of it a dawning realization of who you truly are like what role you this avatar you are plays yeah well there's gonna be so much sorry for making this such a oh, no. yeah, I, I mean i think i can i think i can do i think i can engage with it <laughs> i think i can engage with it um well it's it's um if i can remember what we were talking about it's um there's two there's two there's different types of conditioning coming in isn't there there's mental psychological conditioning and emotional conditioning and because we appear as relative human beings, each human has unique conditioning and so therefore a unique expression. And really it's like, in a way you could see it as like, what's filtering through that expression or what 
paradigm is that expression uh, operating under? Is it under operating under fear, limitation, or uh, or is it operating under the premise of I am peace, wholeness, fulfillment? And when there's a recognition of our true nature, there can, the, the conditioning in the body and mind can survive that and still emerge in uh, life as old patterns of thinking and feeling. And often people feel like sometimes they've lost their awakening because it appears to have taken them over or something like that. And there's this think there's this effort to try and stay present and not get caught by that but ultimately we have to see that no matter how strong it appears we are still consenting to it ultimately um it may appear to be a challenge to so-called not identify but eventually we see we are consenting to it now if that seems to be more tempting the more strong the energy is and the stronger the energy is is usually associated with how much emotional conditioning there is and how in one way you could say like how deep our emotional wounds are or our traumas those of us who have experienced complex or major traumas may have a particularly strong energy pattern of contracted emotional energy that we label fear as anxiety left in the body and mind um, but this can be lovingly approached and the foundation is just resting as your true nature as awareness, but also there are approaches that, that can be engaged with to have that be released from the body and mind gradually over time. And then it over time, it's like, it's like less of that appears to be obscuring the natural qualities of your true nature because i can't remember if we pointed this exactly earlier or is that this was getting to something you originally was saying but it, it is like why do we act in in fear unloving anxiously neurotically controllingly it's not because of our nature it's because of the fear the, the things the fears the anxieties the perceived limitations contractions layered over the top and what we find is that being this authenticity this love this confidence this natural ease and flow isn't something that's added onto us as a new quality like that we have to achieve it's that we find that it's what it's it's naturally present when those that that is those other yes. patterns are released mm. you see so this yes. is part of an embodiment journey um which can happen so-called after a recognition but with the recognition you realize it's timeless anyway you can't really pinpoint it to one moment because what it's pointing to is even any story about you not being awake or you might fall asleep in the future is either a memory or a thought now, and you're consenting yes. to believing you're the I in that thought. Yeah. So just be. Yeah. So as, as a child, are we being trained out of awareness? Is that essentially almost what's happening through environmental conditioning? It, it seems like the me mode, I don't know when it switches on two to five or something like that. Things become about me and mine and 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 then there's all the social conditioning that hypnotism. refines it it's a yeah hypnotism i used yeah. to ask a really i'm going to take it in kind of a stupid direction here real quick <laughs> but i used to ask a question like what does it look like when a moron gets enlightened what does it look like when quasimodo's enlightened you know because like <laughs> <laughs> but but like think about it take somebody like quasimodo man those villagers were relentless they told him what his role in that town was and that was to be mm. alienated and everybody mean to i know it's a fake person but th some people will identify with this story like mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how what kind of light i got shining out of me the people around me will remind me who i am and then mm -hmm. if i don't behave that way i guess i could secretly be enlightened and be like you know which maybe quasimodo was but I just wanted to uh, address the idea of falling back into unawareness, being entrained even after enlightenment back into unawareness, the fear of losing your Satori or the fear of losing this awareness that you gotten because you do have a world to go contend with. You know, there's been times where like I'm I have this proclivity towards aggression, you know, my whole life I have. 
And there have been times where it really feels like this is what's being called up. You know, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter if I went and I just did mm-hmm. a marathon of meditating and, you know, I could sit and, you know, way stiller and calmer and more blissfully than I otherwise could. There are times when it feels like there's a reflection happening from mm-hmm. the individual. Like, I'm only reflecting what I feel like I've been called to be precisely based on my proclivities. Can you talk about that? What happens? Is it like, do you just want to make sure you got a really good enlightenment so that... You don't fall so that it's undeniable. Like, can that be talked about? Well, it's really just seeing and looking at reality honestly and us really being honest about reality and admitting that all of that that plays out is this consciousness appearing as that. So any appearance of an apparent individual who's supposedly not awake or unaware or something is still the freedom of you, your true self consciousness to appear as that. I missed that. I missed what you said, believe it or not. So so if there's this, <laughs> you were saying, is it just like you get really make sure the awakening is stuck or something like that? <laughs> well, well, it, it, if it's undeniable, like if somebody comes back and their head's glowing, you, you can either crucify them or accept them as the returned Messiah. But if somebody comes back and they're having a private Satori and you're like, okay, time to sweep my shit up, you know what I mean, peasant, you know, and you're Mm -hmm. sort of pushed into some societal role based on who you are. Um, Like you said, because maybe we all do kind of start off enlightened and then we're sort of hypnotized and trained like, you know, this is you. I want you to think of yourself as a separate identity and we build up this ego over the course of our lives. If somebody realizes the non-dual nature or has some glimpses of that, you know, ox herding painting style, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what is the what is the deal with that? What is the deal with the feeling as though the contrast between being so heavenly minded, you know, earthly good and mm-hmm. the reality that you've got a role and sometimes your role is a unfavorable role. I mean, depending on what time you emerge in history, you might be like. A literal slave somewhere, you know. What happens mm-hmm. when a slave becomes enlightened? Are they definitely a messiah every time, or do they just there goes another one? Nobody even knew them, you know. Well, the good news with awakening is that whatever is apparently happening, whether you know you're in slavery, torture, or in the middle of a breakup, there is a part of you in the background which is all of you which transcends the appearance and is unharmed by it now that doesn't make what's happening on the relative level relatively good or right it doesn't justify things that are obviously immoral or heinous but it does point to um a perspective a meta perspective beyond it and then the situation can be approached much more empowered. So if there is a chance to change it, to escape the slavery, to get justice, to draw a boundary, to for a different situation to manifest, it will be most likely to manifest in, despite what's appearing situation, not putting your power on that to say, oh yeah, it's you know, in society conditioning us back into the ego, or whatever recognizing and admitting to ourselves that we are consenting to that belief in being limited and personal and that thought narrative in the mind and that no matter how and that's what i was pointing to earlier like no matter how those patterns show up there's still our true nature consciousness this consciousness appearing as that it's like no matter what's happening in a movie there's always a screen and the screen is unharmed by the movie. Be knowingly the screen like nature of awareness and perhaps the movie will change. And, and having that understanding that you're watching a movie is always advantageous to being thinking you're in the damn thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. we'd go to the cinema to kind of slightly lose ourselves in the movie, don't we? But we wouldn't want to ever actually <laughs> yeah. think yeah. we're in Terminator or Aliens. I can't get out of the theater and I'm burning alive. It's the end of <laughs> Glorious Bastards. Um, 
so we got to get to the there's i don't know how much time we got but we have to touch on the no fap stuff we have to touch on the law of attraction stuff okay all right we have to so okay a lot of your a lot of uh some i think it was some of your first videos there was a lot of uh no fap content you know sexual control all this stuff how let's let's somehow swing that into this non-dual conversation because i'm sure there's some part some helping points here with with that Mm -hmm. um it's it's uh and then we'll go into the uh the law of attraction stuff after Mm -hmm. um so what made you want to create all the you know sexual restraint you know i don't know how you no fapping all this stuff sexual control whatever how did you get into that like why was that your first opening videos on your channel and stuff like that and how does it relate well, I didn't think it wasn't the first videos, but I think it was the first video, some of the first videos that really got popular. Yeah, like, like 250,000 views, <laughs> probably, man. Probably because it's, you know, it's a spicy sounding concept, <laughs> isn't it? Like, um, and that's probably why. And I think, you know, as you're going into something, you know, I was obviously trying to create the means for me to be able to serve people in in and 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 in that you um you communicate different concepts or models or modalities that have personally served you and at that time it it was you know in the sense that i didn't realize there could be such a profound difference in energetic state um by doing one thing versus the other by uh, masturbating porn every day versus not doing that um at the no i mean as long as things are obviously ethical no judgment no judgment no one thing's good or one thing's bad it's just that i noticed a big difference uh, and there can be, uh, and, and then also, um, yeah, I'm like a guy that likes high energetic creative states. And so I think that's why it particularly appealed to me at the, the time, because there's a, there's a lot of energy in, um, letting that energy build up within you um it's a bit like fire you know you can burn your you can warm your house and stay alive or you can burn your house down uh <laughs> like <laughs> like energy is, is not good or bad and so it can express itself in functional or dysfunctional ways but i tend not to make so much content around that now because over time it's just my content has evolved and what has become really essential to me and my audience has gradually been distilled further and further towards uh you know what we could put under the label of non-duality so um but still there is interest in the energy transmutations and 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 how that is um represented in all different ways in the food that we eat in the uh the the energetic flow throughout our body with the body state well it can all be a tool right to help you know lead to self-realization right well i wouldn't position it as that because self-realization is unconditional completely unconditional certain energetic practices may appear to lead to something but but anything any practice that appears to lead to what is it is ultimately seen through in the sense that what is is already immediate and unconditional in terms of conditional states a high energy state or a low energy state that's interesting then yeah doing one thing or the other could make a difference i i didn't watch any of the fap stuff the bottom line is it works correct it, <laughs> like it works to change your energetic state maybe give more energy james was saying that in some of those videos they talked about your hair growing in thicker the vast majority of people report it does. I mean, a lot of it's going to be anecdotal. The data, the scientific evidence is, you know, that there have been some studies, but 
the, the anecdotal reports are through the roof in terms of people saying how their energy changes. Remember and that one? Remember there was a guy that we used to watch that was like, he was doing a no-fap thing, but he was like semen retention. He was drinking other people's soup. Do you remember oh, that guy? <laughs> he, he went off the rails with the semen retention stuff. And I think that maybe that's a sign of like, any, like you said, you could burn your house down with something. You, know, you can go a little or too Or you far. can get dogmatic with certain practices. Or get dogmatic. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to miss the practices that, because like there's so much about like turning yourself into a pretzel so that, you know, you can become enlightened essentially, right? Like using yogic practices are, is your stance that not like we don't need those things or like there's a more direct way beyond all the practices. Yeah, it's, it's this kind of not, is there anything to do question, isn't it? And then this, 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 this common thing of there's nothing to do. And it's like, if there's nothing to do, then is uh, practices completely useless or something? But what this message is really saying is that there's nothing to do in the sense of nothing to do as an individual to recognize your true nature, because what it's pointing out is that your true nature is this immediacy of aware presence. Now, is there still something to do to drive your car to work, to heal your emotional pain, to in a way align um, thinking, some behaviors, uh, states, of, states of feeling to this revelation, to this remembering. And so, yes, there's, practices can still obviously be useful in the relative world and the relative world is the relative world of form of our human experience is just as valid it's 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 real it's just illusory in the sense that it's not what we thought it was we thought it was this that we are just this body and mind separate from the world and the, the world is out there out there and that we have to chase peace happiness and fulfillment in the future to the recognition no i already am this consciousness this awareness that lacks nothing and is ultimately needless and desireless and at peace although there can be this expression of it this unfolding of it in 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 the way uh, it expresses in life in terms of manifesting conscious manifestation uh maybe can it's uh, pivoting a career towards something that celebrates this truth, uh, uh, understanding the message. And so it can be also intellectually understood. You know, there is that level as well. It's not the ultimate thing. It's not the actual thing, but there are, the embodiment looks like many different ways. And one of those ways is the intellectual understanding. It's also the nervous system really relaxing and the traumas and the emotions healing and there can be relative practices that can help with that but what this is saying is that the, the, you need not make that a condition to recognize your true nature because your true nature isn't a state or an achievement in the future it's the truth of what all states appear as all forms the most anxious person the homeless person the kings the queens the most enlightened gurus it's all equal it's all this one indivisible screen of awareness appearing as that it's all the being god's being appearing as our in apparently individual forms so you know it's it's about practice in summary practices can be helpful you know in life and in embodiment um, but it's just that they they ultimately can't get to your true nature because your true nature is always this immediate now. In that immediate now, there can be many practices that can uh, create many different states of experience in life. All right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, to me, it seems like um, like there are practices that could that could be conducive to an enlightened you know one person talked about it as like a the moment the fruit's ready to just fall out of the tree you know it just drops and i think sometimes people get confused when they if they see an enlightened person having an alcoholic drink or something like that but uh i'm of the mind that 
you might find if you do a practice, like if you abstain from uh, drugs and alcohol or you stop fapping, I don't know, or whatever the case may be, that that might be the thing that something to do in that pursuit might just create fertile ground for an enlightenment experience. But nevertheless, it doesn't necessarily make it 100% uh, repeatable that that's how everybody's going to acquire enlightenment. But I do think that there are some practices that might make... Um, people more conduce like the environment more conducive to an enlightenment experience. well it's always gonna look like something isn't it at the yeah. end of the day you to even be introduced to this concept you're gonna watch a video aren't you you're gonna read a book yeah you might go to see a guru in india you might turn up to a non-duality zoom you might appear to practice self-inquiry etc but ultimately and and it's not to say that relatively those things aren't part of the appearance or relatively they, they don't help it's just that what is ultimately seen is that this aware presence of our true nature is always present uh in the face in it's what all those practices are appearing as and so it truly is unconditional like that there can be someone who's smoking and drinking and there can be a revelation of this because it's still the same consciousness appearing as that does it yeah. make it relatively help healthy or is it a relative embodiment of this recognition i mean there can be a debate about that but it tends to be that once uh the, the piece of one's true nature is seen there can be a gradual letting go of a lot of destructive habits but not necessarily perfection but you know this because there's less of a, a momentum of trying to immunize emotional pain through compulsive habits but any of this momentum can take a while to kind of slow down and filter out i mean this recognition for me really like happened many years ago, but I'm, I've been on, on, you know, on a journey of embodiment for years, relatively still in, uh, releasing all those fears and anxieties and having that knotted ball of trauma gradually unwinding. And so that I can actually communicate more and more so from a place of love even though it, once you've got the message you can hang up the phone it's always there in the background even when you're in the midst of an argument there can be this recognition in the background this is just an act <laughs> it saved me from arguments i swear i never was able to stop like i've since doing some consciousness work uh thank goodness to people like you that teach people online you know i've been in arguments where i've stopped where i've been like like, what am I doing? I, I can just stop this right now. I don't have to follow the inertia of this thought or the, the inertia of my defensiveness. Okay. It's, it's amazing. That is a good tool to be able to be taught, um, to be able to be coached in. Yeah. Well, you yeah. said you wanted to jump into some of the manifestation stuff. Law of attraction. I'm interested in that. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I've, I feel like I've listened to a few Law of Attraction books, you know, and uh, consumed my fair I've listened share. to a lot of attractions. Love yeah, it. there's a lot of talks on it. Um, what should we know about this? What should everyone know about the Law of Attraction? About the Law of Attraction? Um, I wouldn't, I haven't positioned myself as an expert on the Law of Attraction. And don't tend to use the word that much, but I did make a video recently using uh, the word because I think it's, yeah, we all relate to different aspects of consciousness and spirituality through these concepts and manifestation is something that I was, you know, really interested in or in a way like I am, if you could, if you, uh, if you define it as, you know, creation, the creating things in life, you know, the active creation in life flow, uh, manifestation, um, it's, 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 it's juicy, isn't it? Um, it's the whole unfolding part of this dream, the the form, the um, the ups and the downs, and and uh, I feel and, like and, the hallmark. I feel like the the poster boy for law of attraction is like Jim Carrey or something, you know. Like he, you see speeches where he's talking about oh, uh, writing check. checks to himself, yeah. and 
And then the weird thing is he evolved to somebody that's like says peculiar things like, well, I hope everybody gets what they want. So they see that won't solve it either. And then, you know, I'm wondering if you're going to go if it's uh, going to transition to the point where law of attraction terms and just gets a little more sophisticated where you rather than from an egoic place trying to manifest riches and wealth or whatever it is that you move to a place of seeing that you are the attract. Anyway, I'll let you talk about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we, the law of attraction definitely in the West tends to get filtered through a personal lens because that's the, I guess the culture uh, that it, it's filtering through our cultural lens, you see, but it was always really known as an impersonal law. However, it becomes this thing of, I'm visualizing and manifesting. I am a separate individual. I'm going to uh, imagine what I want and it's going to manifest. It'll be attracted to me. Uh, whereas the law of attraction could be seen uh, through different lenses. Um, in a way, we could say, like, what, well, what's actually manifesting? Is a, is a separate individual manifesting? where does the manifesting power who does the manifesting power belong to right. well really it can only belong to the manifesting power the manifesting consciousness so manifesting is possible but not on the paradigm of being a separate limited individual for that is an appearance of the manifestation that is the appearance in the manifestation the true manifesting power is the beingness the consciousness the awareness and one when one recognizes and relaxes into their true nature as awareness as consciousness then the per the, the desires tend to come to manifestation more frequently because you're now living and experiencing in line with the truth of who you are when you're and trying to manifest from the yeah. perspective of being a limited individual who's trying to attract something to you, you're, you're under the paradigm of powerlessness to begin with. Uh, when you there's this recognition of yourself as the manifesting consciousness, then situations can unfold. Does it mean that life challenges are never going to come? No, that it may be that or, events are ordained from a higher realm outside of time. And there's different things that unfolding in order for the grow growth of the you know the soul or however there's many different ways you could define it but many find obviously that when there is this surrender which is really recognizing yourself as the surrender as the spaciousness which naturally allows everything insights intuitions and synchronicities appear to come in and what was personally desired tends to manifest more frequently the desires of the heart get manifest even you know okay. the it's more, more deep desires that get manifested it's sometimes i think about like you know because a lot of religions will be like well you're going to get 72 72 virgins or or there'll be this promise of you'll walk on streets of gold but i imagine it more like um like a genie and a lamp coming out and you being like all right I wish for riches and the genie being like, instead of that, I'm going to make you not care about riches anymore. Like, that's not the same thing. It's not the same thing as the egoic desires, you know? It seems like what, like, in all honesty, imagine you could explain that to somebody, somebody that was struggling. They, they had a sense of lack, you know, they're surviving, but they've got a sense of lack that's causing, causing them suffering. And you say, rather than just giving you what you think you need, what if I could get away the take away the suffering that comes from that is born from thinking you need something you know what i mean there's deeper desires within you uh that may be accessed and lived out that are uh from an intuitive path you may have a more direct route to um yeah, yeah i think you covered i think you covered the law of attraction stuff very well um well i will say um I, I do remember a point having uh, a lot of money anxiety and uh, uh, you know, I'd been exploring some of these concepts and um, there was even a knowing at the time really that this is just really showing 
within me where there is still this attachment to this fake security you can know that very intuitively and completely and yet there's still there can still be the momentum in the nervous system that responds to particular events like checking your bank balance or something like that and so really the path is allowing all of that fear to burn itself out and then life will show you those opportunities like that's where business building creation really becomes like a yo that's the real value in it not in what you apparently manifest at the apparent end but what but the journey in how the journey in exposing all of your limitations <laughs> yeah <laughs> because Which that's I think what you have to let go of to manifest know, the thing i know and that's the that's the juicy core that's like where it's at but it's a hard sell sometimes you know talking about those things well oh. we all we all want the cars and the sex and the and, and, right. and the money so because <laughs> we've been trained to because we've been told to you know what i mean like it's just weird also it's, like, it's the soft security you know yeah. our, our basic yeah. uh sense of security is tied to this yeah it really can feel like and if trauma. i run out of money i will die or i will yeah. just be perpetually embarrassed into a hell land you know so yeah yeah, yeah. no i've got sympathy both... i've got sympathy for somebody that it seems superficial with like if if you go to school and you were poor when you're growing up and you have bad clothes or something people make fun and then you grow up to always want to look a certain way i i have empathy for yeah. all those type of things you know uh, anyway, sorry. No, I was curious uh, kind of about just kind of like consciousness directly. Like this might seem kind of like a cheeky kind of question or whatever, but like <laughs> what's consciousness doing? Why, why, why create a reality like this? Make it, for, <laughs> make it forget what's going on and then go through this process of re-remembering or awakening to itself. What, 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 what is going on here? What else was it going to do? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I like that answer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I can't I think it would be a bit pompous of me to claim I know like God's plan or something like that. I'll but... Take a jab, just take a stab <laughs> at it. But what we what we can deduce is that, you know, for for a dreamer to appear to itself it has to forget it's dreaming, doesn't it? You know, if there's consciousness and it's just infinite consciousness or it's just pure equalness across an infinite plane, shall we say, there's no contrast, there's no appearance. And so the non-duality appears as the duality. It, it, it's in the appearance and it's how it appears to itself. And through this current dream, we could say it does itself through the human experience and the human body and gravity and the laws of physics and apparent cause and effect. And, uh, you know, probably some of the other physics constants or whatever. And so consciousness in a way like sets up these perceived uh, rules and dualities as a way to appear to itself. And ultimately, I would say to know itself by contrast, because you that's the only way that it can apparently know itself by contrast. Um, so, and, and in a way that seems to be reflected, doesn't it, in the great story arc of life it's this it's often this uh descent into fear and confusion and lostness and forgetting and hopefully you know this return to love and to truth and so the universe is in a way forgetting itself and remembering itself through us and through our trials and tribulations and challenges, it's probably a refinement as well of individual souls. However, all those individual souls are still 
a fractal of the one consciousness which is appearing as you know eight billion humans and however many trillions of animals and aliens and everything <laughs> experiencing itself you know through these different forms as it were as a you know, some people say it's just for the the the, the the joy of creation or is there's no meaning or purpose or but at the end of the day all dualities collapse in the end purpose no purpose will free no free will no free will is it doing something for a reason is it not ultimately it's infinite freedom because it is infinite consciousness isn't it because the whole concept of god is infinite so what is infinite doing infinite <laughs> yeah yeah. Well, here's a question I kind of like to ask uh, for the, the new listeners out there that uh, this, I always like to ask this question for anyone who accidentally tripped over a video like this and is like, what are these guys talking about? And then they're in somewhat intrigued and they're like, where do I what would I do to begin here? Like, where where do I start? And as maybe like a coach, maybe for that person there, you might be able to give some, I don't know, some direction. What, what, what would you say to that person? I'd say to start, just simply be and just be yourself, be as you are. And secondly, there are thousands of books and YouTube videos and everything. Now you can go down a rabbit hole so <laughs> easily. As soon as you touch it with a 20 foot barge pole, you're going to get sucked down that rabbit hole. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then what about the what about the person uh, who's been kind of on this journey for a while and they might be feeling stuck like, uh, man, like it's, it's just not happening for me. Everyone else, it seems like, you know, you know, I see all these guys and new people popping up everywhere, you know, but I just it hasn't hit me yet. What about what about that person? Well, can there be a realization or a revelation that one is consenting to believing themselves to be an individual who hasn't got it yet? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so true, though. I, I, I agree. I've, I've heard that happen many times, like somebody come to the master, the teacher or whatever, so certain of a problem, the teacher's like, just what if that's not true? You know, and I think about what people do get certain about. People are often certain about their woes and their troubles, right? You know, mm. it's like, um, you know, like after everything that goes on with a baby being born, you know, the mother's sitting there and they're holding the baby afterwards and they're crying. They're so happy, forgetting a moment ago that were, it was agony or whatever. Um, mm. And that's really nice. You know, like when it went, like we're, we're here right now, we're not in the midst of chaos. It would be we could very easily tap into being like you said a moment ago. Um, but I have heard it said that sometimes people question their happiness, but they don't question the negative things. It's just a habit possibly uh, to do that. And so I just agree mm. with that. I, I agree with that notion that um, for the seeker that's been at it for a while, it's like maybe the biggest hindrance is that narrative or something, the narrative of like, I've been at it so long. When's it going to be my turn? Yeah. It's like, it's, try it's unbelieving coming. that for a second. Just try unbelieving that story. Yeah, otherwise it's always coming, isn't it? I mean, relatively, if one message isn't resonating, it's like, move on, isn't it? Like, <laughs> it's, it's move on, maybe something yeah. else. I mean, and, and, and also there can be different. I remember watching Eckhart Tolle for the first time and just thinking... I can't connect to this person at all. I have no idea. And then came back to it a few years later and it was received in a completely different way. Yeah. So, you know, just, you know, it's, it's curiosity in life. You can't yes. stop it, can you? Like, you're going to stay curious because there's always something in the background. If there's that dissatisfaction or lack, there's always something in the background that's driving us towards the revelation of these truths, whether or not your suffering is really high and you feel desperate and you're really willing to drop that identity and look beyond it or whether it's more of a creeping fascination that eventually you something just appears to click <laughs> can we get uh, a can we get a glimpse of um could you talk at all about your coaching like um 
how that works, the, the coaching or whatever it is that you do with guidance for people? Yeah, certain people work with me and we have powerful conversations to keep on po pointing out this the immediacy of this true nature. Um, and for that to be embodied and to, for me to be of service in, in any general way I can. I mean, I started off as a coach in the sense of a coach in its purest form, not how it's interpreted nowadays as usually a uh, like a, an advice giver or something like that. But really, you know, coaching started off as asking powerful questions to promote uh, awareness in 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 others uh, awareness and i think the official words were awareness and responsibility I'm not sure i'd use those exact words but it points to the fact that when we have powerful discussions and we're allowed to investigate our own experience and what's true for us that can be a very powerful modality and certain people that's for them to have that one-to-one -one time to have those powerful conversations um uh to 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 point this out and to have assistance with embodying that either through emotional guided releasing and healing talking about it so there's that intellectual integration or just pointing it out over and over again until it's realized that it was always realized or something like that and everybody comes to me with different goals or desires or some people obviously are like you know there isn't any desire ultimately it's just seeing what's immediate and and the truth of beingness and so um it the may a lot of people uh experience fears or um challenging emotions and so that's a doorway in this desire to release and transform that um and uh, it can be a, a spectrum of different things and you know some people come in uh wanting to really discover true nature and i would never position my service as something that like here yeah, i'm gonna sell you awakening or something like that like it's available always immediate now although also uh we can have conversations where i'm gonna point this out over and over again and help do whatever I can to be a reflection of you, you know, it's you manifesting me and talking back to you, uh, pointing this out and, and, and having your body. So that, that, that's what I offer. And then there's some online materials to go with that. Um, and people make inquiries at the moment, my services might change in the future, but right now that's the offer I've been doing for quite a while. And I really, have done that for a long time without just like quickly transitioning to group offers or things like that, because I'd really have valued that one on one time together. That's where I felt I really learned the most and grown the most myself. And in a way, there's the most responsibility to actually create shifts together, because it's not just a throwaway course that you might buy and then forget about like, no, we're, we're here having conversations and we're yeah. going to see what's happening over the week. So um brilliant yeah yeah it's not the same available. thing as some sh show or something you know what i mean like i feel <laughs> like there was a time prior to the internet where people like yourself could connect with people where it was like 90 percent of it was a sh show it was a side it was a circus show you know what i mean just to get people in the building to hear maybe we'll get to the deep stuff but nowadays it's amazing to me that you can get right into those you can connect with people and then you can talk to them and uh, get right to it. I think that's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, from what I could see, all, all, all the perceptions I had about needing to do certain things in a particular way, and um, to, you know, uh, communicate your message, and then have people contact you about, you know, potentially services or whatever. I've, 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 it, it's just become more and more simple over time. I just, yes. I just say what I want to say and what I'm interested in and what I think other people are going to be interested in. I try and create value. I try and just give it all away on the video. Mm. Don't hold anything back. Just, just give it all away. And then a certain amount of those, you know, most of those people are going to be like, thank you next video. And some of those people are going to be like, oh, I want to talk to this person and go deeper. And then I have conversations. And just give and give and give and give 
and then eventually if uh, if i feel like i can really help i'll, I'll offer something and and if it, if we do it we do it and if we don't we don't and and it's just so simple now like all this you know when you first start getting into entrepreneurship and there's all this stuff about uh you know selling and everything and obviously like it's some kind of structure <laughs> to a process is appropriate but um i found now you know the right people just gravitate towards you and 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 also that it gives you uh the ability to just put out just all the, the all the free content as well and that's so you don't have to you know have my services you could just watch the content if and, and that there's a lot of value there so well that's some great stuff alex me and justin we want to thank you so much for taking the time to come and join us on the show it's been great time went fast it was like that was a great conversation talked a little bit about your coaching but maybe for our audience to close things out you can let them know where they can find you how they can reach you anything you might got going on and uh we'll wrap her up sure uh youtube alex shayla alex shayla.com free resources on there and speak to alex.com if you want to book a call about coaching inquiry all right thank you thanks thanks again so much for joining us alice it was awesome thanks for having me on Thank you.